Would you like to get an inexpensive Christmas decoration like this to look like this in about less than 10 minutes and four easy steps? Of course you would. So stick with my video and I'll get you there. Hi, this is Bruce here again. And uh, we're going to take a look at how to transform an inexpensive bottle brush tree, which is flocked with snow, into a fairly handsome evergreen tree for your layout or diorama. And again, four easy steps. Okay, I guess first we want to rattle off the reason why you would even consider going to an inexpensive Christmas ornament to try to populate your layout. And this is appropriate for all scales because you can get these bottle brush trees in a variety of sizes. First of all, why do they call them bottle brush trees? Well, if you remove the base here and look, you can see there's a twisted metal armature just like on a bottle brush. And, uh, and that is holding these uh, pine needles, if you will, in place. And then they just trim it to cone shape and you got your tree. So that's the name. If you want to Google it to see if you can buy some, Google bottle brush trees. Um, come in a variety of sizes. These are two inches tall. Two inches tall in HO scale gives you a tree that is oh, about 14 inches, uh, 14 feet high. Nice size tree. Uh, of course, in N scale, it would be about twice that tall, and in O scale, it would be about half that tall, about a seven foot tree. The um, nice thing about these is they come in sizes from about an inch and a half tall up to six inches tall or more. Uh, dirt cheap for sure, if you go and shopping right after your Christmas holiday in any um, pretty much any kind of store. Grocery stores in their seasonal aisle, uh, certainly all the craft stores, big box stores, they'll have bags of these things, uh, just about giving them away. And if you don't want to wait until the holidays to buy some to experiment with the technique I'm showing you, go online, um, Amazon or your favorite vendor, Google Bottle Brush Tree, you will find packs of 36 or even 48 of a variety of sizes for 10 bucks. So, yeah, that's what it has going for it. It's cost, dirt cheap. Often they come flocked with snow, like this. And uh, as I promised you four steps, the first step is removing the snow, unless your layout is winter-based and you want to keep it just as is, in which case you have a zero-step process that you need. Just plop it onto your layout or diorama and you're done. But I have a summertime uh, layout, and most many of us have summertime, fall, or spring. So you want to get rid of that snow flocking. Just take the whole bundle, toss them into a basin of warm water for about 15 minutes, uh, go in there and start working with your fingers, and this will all come off. If instead of pulling it off, your fingers shove some of it down deeper into the uh, bristles there, I find that a stiff toothbrush just taken and fl flicking out the white debris that's in there usually does the trick. And if there's one or two really tough guys stuck down in the bottom, get yourself a toothpick and flick it out. That whole process, again, 15 minutes of soaking, another 10 or 15 minutes working to get the flock off, and you'll have a whole bunch of trees that look like this. Now, again, some of you might say, that's fine, I'm done. And you have just a one-step process. And I see no problem with that. It's your layout, your diorama, you do what the heck you want. But for me, other than uh, on a Christmas tree lot or on somebody's front lawn who's obsessive about trimming their trees, you don't really ever see in the wild a perfect cone-shaped uh, evergreen tree. They're somewhat cone-shaped, but never this perfect. Uh, the other thing is that uh, this color may or may not please you. So what are the things we can change about this tree? We can certainly change the, uh, the color. We can change the uh, texture. And uh, 
Yeah, we can even change that shape somewhat. So let's see what we can do. Let's say that you aren't satisfied with the tree uh, as it is, that you want to make it look less cone-shaped. Just get yourself your scissors, come down about a oh, half inch and start snipping off randomly, turn it, turning it each time, start clipping off some of the greeneries and come down another quarter of an inch or so and clip off some more greeneries. And what I find is that as you progress, if you really want to see, coming down another layer, if you really want to see the effect you're getting, hold it up to the light to look through the tree and you'll see the shape that you are you're getting and you can start seeing spaces between uh, the branches and so forth and you keep doing that all the way down. It's not a perfect pattern. You don't want a perfect pattern. You want to create some spaces and interrupt the perfect cone shape that's there. So, you know, this process takes as long as you want to perseverate on it, but uh, for me, it's usually three or four minutes of flipping. This is a kind of job, now that the weather's getting nicer, go sit on the deck with a bunch of these and uh, do your snipping and holding it up to the light to look through it and get the shape you like, get those all done and set it aside. So some of you at that point would be done because you're happy with the color and now you've interrupted that perfect cone shape and so you have yourself uh, a tree to plant on your layout or your diorama. If you're like me and you're not all that keen on uniform colors like that, and there's a little bit of shine on those, uh, the next step would be to get your favorite rattle can of paint that you use when you make other trees. And for me now, I'm starting to zero in on this one as my choice. Make sure that you can see it. So it's a Rust-Oleum and you can see it is a satin London Gray. Now the thing about London Gray is it's somewhat a cross between a brownish color and a grayish color. And as we all know, tree trunks normally are more on the gray side than the brown side. So I find this gives you a nice color for use on your trees. Uh, a lot of people use uh, some camo paints and stuff. All good, whatever's your favorite. You wanna use a different color green, different color brown, just take a spray can. Go out to the garage or wherever you do your spray painting and give it the tree a light dusting of the paint all the way around and from the bottom. In my case, I certainly don't want to make it look like a brown tree, but I do want to take the shine off. I want to let some green come through. I want to add some of the other colors. This tree, if you look at it, has been snipped and butchered to get the cone shape out of the picture here. So in other words, I did to that tree what I was showing you on this tree, only now you can see there's a difference in the colors. And uh, do what you want. You want to have three different kinds of tr uh, pine trees on your uh, layout. Um, spray this tree, leave some of them alone, spray some with one color, some with another color. You're good to go. Just giving this a barber trim makes a world of difference on the uh, comparison. Let me just zoom in on those a minute before we go any further and I'll show you the difference between them. All right, so pretty much a cone shape and here as you turn it around you see you get various layers and so forth, a much more natural looking tree. Okay, so this tree is halfway through step two, which is giving it the haircut. This tree is really now the result of step two and three. It's been given the haircut and we have spray painted it to get rid of the gloss, change the color somewhat. Okay, original tree, step one, get rid of the flock. Step two and three, give it the haircut and give it a new color. All right, what would step four be? Well, step four would be to change the texture, 
add some flocking. So this is our ground foam. And what does it take? Two things, an adhesive and then some fine turf or ground foam. For adhesives, you can either go with your favorite brand of uh, spray adhesive. So this is the Krylon brand. I also have 3M and used others as well. Or, just as often, I reach for dollar store hairspray. The cheaper, usually, the stickier it is. So here you go, they're not even mixing words. It's a hairspray, otherwise known as a fixative. So you can just spray your tree, which is looking like this, all the way around with your favorite fixative, all right, your favorite adhesive, and then come in with your favorite fine ground foam. This is not an application for coarse. This is for fine, and drizzle it from the top down all the way around, and you get yourself now a tree that has really removed itself from that Christmas tree with flocking look. And again, as I said, four easy steps. When you do it in mass production like this, you're knocking these things out like crazy because you don't even have to, when you spray paint, you don't even have to wait for that paint to dry before you throw on the uh, fixative if you're in that much of a hurry. In terms of your choice of ground foams, I don't play favorites. Usually it's whatever's on sale. So here's a Scenic Express um, grass green fine. Okay, that's Scenic Express. Here's uh, JTT. JTT, which is one of the smaller brands, but readily available here in the States. And this is their blended turf fine green. Okay, and of course, Woodland Scenics. Uh, fine turf, green grass, another good choice. But you can go light green, dark green. A lot of them have medium greens, and you can get yourself a variety of looking uh, evergreens out there. Um, yeah, what are these things made out of? Normally, you know, probably three quarters of the time at least, they're made out of uh, sisal. Sisal is a natural growing plant that looks a little bit like a cross between a, a yucca plant and a uh, uh, aloe plant grows in uh, southern Mexico and can uh, be grown commercially any place in the tropics. You make twine out of it, you make rope out of it, and they make a lot of these bottle brush trees out of it. Uh, some of them are also made out of totally synthetic. This process works well with either one. So, yeah, you don't have to spend a lot of money to get some good looking uh, evergreen trees. And, uh, you know, I was going to title this, with tongue-in-cheek, sprucing up your bottle brush trees. But I figure, yeah, give it a better title, make YouTube happy. But the, uh, the process is a great one. Get a variety of sizes, variety of colors, textures, and you're good to go. And again, I think most of us say it's your railroad. You want that on your railroad, you put it on your railroad. But most of us can see the difference between the tree on the left, which is the Christmas decoration, and the evergreen tree on the right. Okay, that's it, short and sweet. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have not yet, please subscribe to my channel. And as always, I'll talk to you again soon.